Hi guys, it's Stephanie. I'm back with another art video. We're talking about Nevernight by Jay Kristoff. I'm not about to deface this gorgeous edition of it, so we're gonna do some art on actual paper. I am going to be drawing Mia, the main character of this book, and I already have the outline and sort of the basic composition drawn just to save us some time. And what I do to envision a character is keep a list of traits while I'm reading. So like I have a list of Mia. Every time I come across a descriptor I write it down. My, my camera is recognizing Maddie's face as like another face in the video. But this is my new favorite shirt so one of my very best friends Zoe and I got to go to the SIA concert on Tuesday. So amazing! Seriously one of the best shows I've ever seen. It was like watching pure art while listening to the most stunning vocals ever and Maddie is just a rock star. So anyway, sorry if Maddie's face is distracting you because it's certainly distracting my camera. <laughs> I am often asked how much time something took me to draw and I, as much as I hear that question I never think to actually pay attention, but in case anyone's wondering about how long it took me to draw Mia, I think I worked on it for about seven to eight hours a day over six days, which is actually quite fast for me to work, but I was under a serious time crunch to get it done before Jay's Gemini event next week. So I would say this took about 48-ish hours. I had to turn the camera off quite frequently, but I think you can still get the idea of the process. And you can watch my nail polish chip off as the week progresses. And I totally meant to take it off before I started filming today and forgot. All right, so let's get started. Nevernight takes place in a fantasy world under three suns that practically never set. So it is never night. True dark comes around just once every few years. And that is the time when all of the suns set. Basically, this is hell on earth to me already. I hate the sun. I am 1000% night owl. So this is like already a horror story to me. We have Mia who comes from nobility. Her father was executed as a traitor when she was very young and her mother was taken. So she's left orphaned on the streets at a young age and discovers she has this ability to talk to the darkness and move it at will, play with shadows and things. And the shadow cat becomes part of her and absorbs her fear, helping her feel strong and less alone. Mia makes the decision that everyone involved in her father's murder is going to pay, and she trains as an assassin to personally kill every person who had a hand in his death. She ends up at this, what I would describe as a boarding school for assassins. The teachers and students alike are all trained, practiced killers, and it's an extremely violent, dangerous, terrifying place to be. And Jay doesn't hold off on the violence at all. This book is very explicit both sexually and violently, which is something I really appreciate about it. It doesn't pander to a young crowd, even though this is technically a YA book. The language is very smart, poetic, and dense and beautiful, and it reads completely like an adult book, which is how I believe all books should read. Young people don't need to be talked down to. I would caution you however if you don't like explicit violence because this gets significantly gory. I'm not at all a fan of horror films or watching gory disgusting stuff on screen, but I really don't mind reading about it. I was fine with the violence. It was shocking and thrilling. And this book is also quite sexually explicit, so if you're not into the smutty stuff, just be aware that it's here. I love the smut. If you know my favorite books, they're all highly smutty. <laughs> I love when it's well written. By it, I mean sex. And also when it's written as a normal thing. I hate when sex is made out to be this turning point, life altering, life completing, holy experience. It is what it is, and if it's written well, it's a pretty hot good time. And Jay's scenes are smoking. Actually, the very first chapter of this book, I am avoiding spoilers in this video, but I'm about to talk about the first chapter in detail, just FYI. The first chapter parallels Mia's first sexual encounter and her first time killing someone. The way this was written is what drew me into the story. It flashes back and forth, to these two experiences and I was living for it. Mia paid for her first time because she wanted to see what all the fuss was about before she died in case 
she was about to die. Under those circumstances, it's clearly not going to be a good time, but it's still a very emotional, visceral thing. And the parallels in the writing of that and the murder was enthralling and really chilling. So I was obviously hooked from there. The writing, as I said, is very dense, very descriptive and detailed. The world building is fantastic. So this is not a fast read. It took me a long time, not because I wasn't enjoying it, but but because there was so much to absorb and learn. The book also does something interesting in the formatting. There are footnotes throughout the book like you'd find in a textbook, and I found most of these footnotes to be filled with the exposition. So the text would make mention of a name or place with an asterisk beside it, and you could get all the info you want about the thing in the footnote. Or you can skip over all that exposition and come back to it later. It makes the book feel interactive in a way, which was really fun. And some of those footnotes, a lot of those footnotes, were just sarcastic, funny remarks. Jay, I've said before, is one of my favorite people. I love his writing and his humor. Also, in an interview with Little Book Owl quite a while ago, he mentioned that he sometimes listens to Ludovico Ainaudi while he writes, which is my writing music. Ainaudi is my creative inspiration. His music has inspired so much of my own writing and drawing, so to hear that someone I admire so much creatively also listens to him was such an awesome moment for me. I actually listened to this while I was drawing Mia for most of those 48-ish hours. <laughs> anyway, back to Nevernight. Oh my god, I started losing my mind the closer I got to the end. No spoilers, but I'm still recovering. I spent the entire last third of the book going <sighs> What? Things went in directions I didn't expect, which is one of the reasons Jay is so great. I pride myself on generally just being able to figure out where stories are headed long before they head there. So when a book is able to take me by surprise, it wins my favor forever. Illuminate got me and Nevernight really got me. <laughs> it gives me a lot of Akatar and Akamath feelings, and I think if you're a Sarah J Maas fan you would enjoy this world as well. Certain things have me feeling like their worlds would cross over pretty seamlessly. Just the nature of what Mia is makes me think of as for obvious reasons if you're an Akamath fan, and it has me wanting to make some Mia Asriel art. We'll see if anything comes of that because I have ideas. That's my Mia. It was very difficult for me to refrain from beautifying her face. I like how she looks, but it was really difficult for me to keep from straightening out her nose or removing the circles from her eyes and filling out her face a little bit more. But I really wanted to go with her real face because her face does get altered as the story goes on. But I wanted to draw her real face, which is specifically described as not pretty. So that was sort of like a challenge for me because I tend to automatically try and beautify characters when I'm drawing them. But I'm very happy with how she came out. This is definitely the way I see her. Even though her face is a little different now, I still see this girl. I do have Society6 open now. There's not much up there at the moment. I will have Mia up there. A couple other Akamath drawings are going up very shortly. I'm also still planning on opening Etsy where you can order custom artwork on your books like Akamath here. But I just don't have time to take on a project of this magnitude for multiple other people out there, you know, so stay tuned. It is coming eventually. We'll get there. Let me know if you've read Nevernight yet, and also let me know if you're going to be at Amy Kaufman and Jay's Gemini event on November 1st at Books of Wonder, because I will be there, so let me know if I'll be seeing any of you. That would be awesome. I made a print for Jay. I was going to print it on a uh, board, and then I decided sort of at the last minute when I was at the art store to get the board that I was going to put on this blank little journal so that it could maybe be something that he'll use instead of something that will just sit around being useless. <laughs> All right, anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye! There is a typo on this gorgeous jacket and it is crushing my soul. Mia would not stand for this nonsense.